what has happened over the period of the last decade and a half uh, with the ascendancy of the W. Bush administration, there began to come together a whole series of various uh, bureaucratic motivations that they had that generated a, a major epidemic uh, of seizures of children. And that they, they deemed the cultural differences in the child to be indications of mental illness. And that they started giving them a, an entire algorithm of, of powerful psychotropic drugs that brings all the way up to Zoloft and Zyprexa, which were prohibited from being given to any children under the age of 18. Uh, they started to be, become you know, self-destructive, and they would cut themselves, they were, had suicidal thoughts and would attempt suicide. Uh, they would act out and become completely uh, reckless and emotional, all of which had been expressly identified by the Food and Drug Administration as symptoms that would be manifested if they gave these drugs to children under the age of 18. This is what's been going on in the state of South Dakota. The state, they won't talk with us, they won't deal with us. They'll never admit they, they made a mistake or that there was a problem. In January, I declared a state of emergency on a number of children that were been taken from Pine Ridge. We've lost so many. And I believe it's uh, about 4,000 children that we've lost in the last 15 years. Many of these children do come home, but uh, they come home as adults and they're trying to find a place. We are in this amazing struggle, and to me it's really a historic event. For once, our, our people are fighting once again for our children. I, uh, I attended the summit this summer, and I listened to some of that testimony, and I was, for a long time, I intellectualized things, but when I started to hear those stories, then it just hit me in the heart. It just broke my heart, and it made me want to fight all the more. The state isn't participating fairly. They're not allowing us that opportunity. So I say it's a fight, it's a battle. And I believe that we as Native people have picked that battle and we've chosen it very carefully because it's one that we can win. This is like an old-fashioned story. This is an old-fashioned story, I think, about, about the media confronting, confronting a, a very seriously bad problem and having a role, I think, in a peaceful solution. We really uh, extremely appreciate the coverage that NPR has, has done on the situation in South Dakota. As you know, we, we've got a real serious situation out there, and it's, it's, it's an epidemic, and it's still going on and we've had a, a host of meetings to try to figure out uh, a solution to it. There's a real event taking place here, which is historic. Uh, and so that it's something that should be, in our, in our opinion, covered, because what it shows is that the, the, the Lakota people have all come together and provided a positive alternative to what's happening, that they're, they're not into pounding on and beating up on the Department of Social Services unless they have to. We very much appreciate your coming by. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, for the past two years, uh, this has been an important conversation internally yes. uh, among many people. The question of when we dip in to cover something, uh, we, we, uh, we take a, a, a big step on it, on, on a story like the series from it was almost exactly two years ago. It was yes. two years mm -hmm. ago last month. October, October 25th, uh, yeah. Um, uh, we take a big step like that. And uh, we then essentially, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it's, I think enter into a period of conflict within ourselves um, when uh, we uh, want to stay with a story, we want to stay committed and interested in a story, we don't devote the kinds of resources that we did casually and without having a continuing interest. Right. The, the sort of moment that you're at right now uh, sounds very much like an important step in this, in, in this very difficult process. Mm -hmm.
when a story comes out that is perceived as controversial after the fact, or that rate blows something out of the water, like this story did, it's always nice to have a happy ending and to be able to cover the positive outcomes that we're working on right now. It was evident and I felt good that Department of Justice and the Bureau of Indian Affairs said we will, we will look at doing the interagency agreement. We can determine our own self-determination. We can jurisdictionally handle the requirements to keep our children safe. And we can do it culturally competent to make sure that our children retain our culture. If you spend much time there and learn about these things, the kind of trauma that happens to these kids in the state process, this, this tearing apart and breaking everything up and lots of pharmaceuticals and people getting, the kids getting suicidal and all of this, when you compare it to the Lakota way that is being done at Lowell, it is, it is not, there's no question. The Lowell program that exists right now in Pine Ridge is, has procedures and customary laws that they use from traditional Lakota history and, and that, that are much more healing and much more effective in working with the parents, the children, the extended families when they take in kids that need to be helped. It's really valuable to hear this level of detail and that contributes significantly to, what, to the dialogue internally as to what become our next steps. We're extremely encouraged. It just takes capable, dedicated people who have their spirit in it. And that's what we have.